this great resignation that people talk about, the quiet quitting, quitting and staying. You know, it's much better to have somebody quit your organization than quit and stay. <laughs> so Apple's going through this right now. And they're like, well, people don't want to come back to work three days a week. And so the whole conversation is around how much do they have to work or show up, which is so wrong. Take a person that's unhappy in their job and have them work less is not going to make them happier. What we need to do is say, what's the real problem here? Find a way for them to be totally engaged. And the, the idea of how much am I working and do I have to drive there is going to become so secondary, tertiary, you know. But right now, when we have people in the wrong roles, yeah, they're going to talk about what are my perks, what are my benefits, what are my... And, and people default back to salary. And while I believe everybody needs to, to make enough money to live their lives, that's a really low on the totem pole. What people really want is to do the kind of work that gives them joy and energy. And the companies that do that well. Here's the other thing that's going on. If you have 10 people and you want to improve productivity, we think, well, we're going to have to hire four more. First, get those 10 really productive. Figure out what they should be doing. Reorganize. I mean, we literally are getting twice as much work done in half the time. I mean, that sounds like a, maybe it's in the same amount of time because people are working in their geniuses where we could have hired four more people and we'd have had just as much frustration and just more people. So start with, are we really tapping into a person's motivations and once you get there, then you can figure out what other resources you really need. I love that viewpoint. And I feel, unfortunately, again, the conversation gets so focused on the productivity and then the earnings tied to productivity, whether it's from the shareholder value that's created out of that productivity or whether it's the take-home paycheck. And we're focusing on the wrong variables inside the team and there are top-down pressures for performance. And oftentimes those performance metrics that we're using don't even tap into anyone's working genius as we just discussed. Think about listening to this. Yeah. How many of you have had a performance review on any of the things that we just discussed? Your ability to discern when you're galvanizing, when you're getting people together. And unfortunately, a lot of people are feeling right now like this is my hidden genius. Why can't my boss, my team see me for who I am? And then you remove the in-office interaction and now we're doing it all over zoom where we feel even less seen and of course quiet quitting makes sense of course the great resignation makes sense it's like no one's recognizing my genius i'm the galvanizer i'm getting everyone on board but in my performance review well i heard the numbers were down so now we got to start tightening our belt but wait a second i've been the one leading the charge of getting people on board of these great ideas that you're coming up with aj and johnny you're coming up with in your wonder so I feel that that once you understand from an assessment point of view and you can share this and communicate it with your team, what your genius is, and if they don't respect it, if they don't want to use it to their advantage either, then leave, then it's crystal clear. 